Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blazon Nation! Where the World Wide Web and real life world collide and brings current events to you, then takes it all into debate. With your hosts from the depths, The Thang, and JBJ Blaze! Did you see how I got your name in there? Yeah. Sick, isn't it? Anyway, welcome back to Blazon Nation. This is episode 17, recorded on the 1st of September 2014. And before I forget to say it, tomorrow is the day hell doesn't really break loose. It actually kind of breaks in. This is the back to school edition of Blazon Nation, even though our articles aren't really related to school, but we're gonna get there. So, sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. Alright, so let's start off with you saying, how has your month or weeks been? Well, it's been great. I, uh,. I recently started playing Dead Space 3 again on my PlayStation 3, and I have started my hardcore playthrough, which is you can't die once, and I've already beaten that on PC and a 360, so I'm kind of a gaming nerd. Um, I am also teaching um, my mom how to play Ellie Noir on the PS3. <laughs> if you're on my friends list, you will notice that there is, it says I'm playing a game, but I'm not really. It says Ellie Noir PS3. I was actually down there trying to help her, and she's getting used to it. She's having a lot of fun, which is great, because she doesn't play that many video games, so I'm introducing that to her. Um, aside from that, um, I bought some new clothes for work today, and I'm glad that I went. Probably spent a, a lot of money just buying a pairs of pants. That's pretty much how my week has been going. It's been going well. Happy Labor Day. Thank you, and happy Labor Day to you. So for myself, I think I've probably gone through the whole, um, the whole muzzleloading stuff that happened a couple or so weeks back, but I am, I've gotten uh, some Monday blazy logs, which I usually don't do now, but I've also gotten back to the Friday stuff. I'll probably leave in the show notes somewhere um, Crystal Crow's GoFundMe campaign in which she's just got a lot of disabilities upon disabilities and she has successfully raised over $10,000 towards her goal to get an RV and other things she needs before her family member moves away from their home, which she currently has a camper um, camped at. So that's just awesome. Seeing the whole gaming and Minecraft community come together like that, it warms my heart, and, and especially with what's gone on earlier this year with the gaming community and even this one thing that we will be talking about in details as well as in the rundown but with these four Minecraft conventions that turned out to be scams. So I guess I'll talk about that a little. On YouTube I've been wasting some of my time in comment battles with people whether it be about Surfadora or r really just anything. So actually it's been currently regarding um, for some reason whether Mr. Robin Williams is going to heaven or to hell, which is driving me nuts because why, why does it need to be debated after all that just a whole matter of it. He's spent his whole life, turns out to be a very depressed, a, dep 
a very depressed life, but that was just a very, very deep inside he had. And all we ever saw was a smile and the fact that he just made so many of us laugh. He was involved, whether he knows it or not, with so many people's childhoods, whether it be Jumanji or Dead Poet Society, which are movies that I've grown to love a lot and are actually the most memorable ones for me. And then, just a whole debate there, which I just settle it to. I believe God is merciful and loving, and after all that Robin Will Mr. Robin Williams has been through on Earth, he's well deserving of going up. But, and then the other one is Surfador's videos, who we've talked about before on the show, in which he is the now 12 year old who got ecstatic over getting a like on a video, and then someone on Reddit turns out it was a joke they were just playing. But next thing we all know, Sir Fedor's fame just, whew, it just is like a fish out of the water. And lately he's been getting a lot of crap in the comments. And I I'm not sure whether it is a thing to hope or not, but that he, I, I doubt he reads the comments and if he doesn't, then that's not necessarily a bad thing either because it, there's just a lot of people saying rude things whether it be stop making videos calling him homophobic names or calling him fat etc and I've been getting into a lot of comment battles with these people over that and for the vast majority of them, if not all of them, they're just jealous. And they're taking their jealousy out by insulting him as disgustingly as they can. But more recently and into more happy things, my brother has made it to um, to London today for college which he'll be starting soon as I'll be going back to high school soon for a uh, victory lap and I'm sorry about all these breaks I'm taking here <laughs> gotta think of it all and most lately I am trying to convince my parents to let us switch to unlimited internet which seems which what seems to be the best way to go is start due to just simply their pricing and features they offer and yeah so far that's pretty much about it ready for the next thing thing yeah bring it on Oh, and actually, before I leave this segment, uh, I had a bit of a comment on what you said about Dead Space 3. Everybody, that was his reason as to why we couldn't run the last episode. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, because he got caught up, caught up on that. Oh. Uh. <laughs> no worries. Anyway... <laughs> Brace yourselves, it's the Rundown! Alright, so you'll notice that I finally updated the Rundown bumper, but more importantly... So, this week... Man, that was a crappy segue. But, <laughs> we have Justin Carter having to go back to court for what happened last year, which was a Facebook comment that got taken 
far out of proportion. And it it is an ugly comment, but when you at, at least when you get down to the last line, you'll find out it's not an ugly comment. It's a sarcastic one. And then we have Yogg's cast declining comment a comment regarding Yogg Ventures um, funds for their Kickstarter, which the game was successfully funded. However, they I guess their the team that was working on it. I think it was either they fell apart, or they just got bored of it, and yeah, we'll get more into that on details. We have Phil Fish bashing fans over demands of Fez 2, which is the topic that I was talking about in Sidewalk Talk. And you want to do the last three? Yep, and the one that I added was about the standalone Kick Connect 2.0 for Xbox One was given a release date and price because obviously we should know what the Connect is. If you don't buy now, then you're probably not up today. So go ahead and look it up. And then brief topics that came to mind involve... Uh, Feminist Frequency founder Nina Sarkeesian and a video that I uploaded to YouTube which was featured um, recently. I think I went the, it was on the 26th, but I just found out like one, two days ago. Oh, wow. Which I didn't... What I was going to leave to you was that Chloe Grace Moretz has announced she's done as Hick Girl and I'm gonna find it so hard to say it. I'll just call it kick horse. <laughs> or oh. <laughs> that's well, the name of the movie. It, 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 it was... You're you're quoting it. So usually when you quote something and you say it, it doesn't sound as bad because you're it's it's a quote. You're not actually saying it True. from your own mind. Right? That's that's how I see it. it, it Come on. It's not that bad. It's just, a, it's just a title. And for me, it's enough to type, though. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, like I say, she's done with kick-ass. Pardon my language. <laughs> You're good. Go anyway, on. Anyway, so that is the rundown. Now, let's talk about them. And for those who think so far things are very sappy, don't worry. I'm a pro at editing. Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so in the details, first off, we have the Justin Carter case again. And for those who haven't yet, hopefully yet, not sure if anyone would listen to it though, but the very first episode of Blazon Nation, I think I did talk about this I could be wrong but what happened last year was after a game of League of Legends Justin Carter and some Canadian fool or in um, Weird Down's language some Canadian idiot they got rambling uh, at each other on League of Legends and I guess they decided to Take it out on Facebook with it ending in the Canadian calling Justin Carter insane or something along those lines. And in response, Justin Carter says, Oh, yeah, I am so insane that I'm going to shoot up a whole school of children and eat. They're still beating hearts. Maybe I should have said trigger warning, but not that it really matters because at the end, LOL, JK. This is all in, this is all in quotes, people. Yes. I'm not really saying it. <laughs> Go on. But 
So what happened there, again, is probably the Canadian fool decided to whine to their mother about this comment. And then the mother must have gone to the police about it. And next thing we know, there's no investigation. There's... There's just nothing but send the kid, send it Carter right to jail, and just I guess that was the end of it, and they, and I guess there's even another post here, but, oh, that's older, but anyway, and he got a sentence of 10 years in jail because of a so-called terrorist threat. Catch my drift? <laughs> hmm. or, or did you hear about this before? Well, here's my take on it. So, a lot of people talk about the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Yeah. But in this case, this person who posted a Facebook comment obviously did not mean what he said. But he should know what he is typing out and is saying to a certain person or company or whatever. It's not the other person's fault who actually took it as a threat and reported it to the authorities. Because if I saw somebody do that, then I actually might take action as well. But that's why I don't go on Facebook all that often. But here's the point. The point is, is that you should know exactly what you are typing out to say to something or someone or some company or whatever before you send it. However, that doesn't mean that there are issues with the individual. Sometimes the parents are the ones who are to blame for raising their kid that way. Maybe it's because this kid has been exposed to too much uh, media or he's Actually, been... according to his parents, he basically is an attentive of the media stuff. So it, but like I it, say, so claims his parents. Yeah, it it was a poor choice of words and... Judging from what he actually said that he didn't mean, um, I wouldn't have said that. And, you know, the thing is, is that when somebody sends a text message or, or makes a comment without making sarcasm obvious, it's really hard to tell unless you put like one of those face emoticons or something like that. Then they probably wouldn't have taken it seriously. But that's the thing. Text messages, plain text, shows little to no emotion unless it is obvious. Otherwise, it's too subtle, and it could result in these kinds of situations happening. So I hope the, per I hope the kid learned his lesson. I hope the kid's parents learned their lesson. And to be honest, I don't think he deserves 10 years in jail. That's the sentence of a bank robber. Yeah. So, I don't think he should go to jail for 10 years, but what I do know is that you need to be careful what you say when it comes to just leaving comments, and you're too subtle, and not showing any, like, any, um, obvious um, emotion. Yeah. You have to leave something obvious in your comment to let them know you're kidding. And he did. JK and LOL. Not, not sure what order he put it in, but... He put it in some way. It was just a poor choice of words, even w when he was kidding. So mm -hmm. I guess it's partly his fault. But he shouldn't go to 10 years. That's just, that's way too long. And, and the other thing, too, is this isn't a game. And with the podcasts I've been listening to from the Dead Workers Party, I think, especially Core Elements, they have said numerous times, uh, actually, this might have being more so on their Smite podcast, but that 
The thing between Smite and League of Legends, Smite has a very polite community, or at least in comparison to League of Legends. League of Legends is widely known in the gaming community to be full of douchebags. And that and it's not just League of Legends, it's Call of Duty. I saw this video someone made in Call of Duty and they were just spewing crap everywhere of language or in this um, Arma 3 mod, I forget what it's called, but Bitburner, who is an 8-bit music maker, he had been live streaming and on this one server he popped on, there was this jerk saying a bunch of things about black people, but in referring to them as the N-word. But, yeah. but case in point is, I feel that if you don't know what any of these games are like, you should not be you should not be making any decisions whatsoever. Maybe bloody well there should be a um, lawyer or attorney or whatever who on the side is a is a video gamer and might actually know a thing about this stuff. But, like so, League, the League of Legends community is known for how rude they will be to each other, whether it be your skill or whatever in the game. And then there's the free speech in there. There's the fact that he said, LOL, JK. Just, a uh, oh, and then when they did do the investigation, there was no proof at all. Yep. There was nothing to prove he was a terrorist or mentally ill. Although, when he was in jail, he ended up going on suicide watch. Which is so far the only real mental... Mental... Mentality issue that... Or at least that I've heard of, or let alone the public's even heard of. But I'm I'm just very surprised this is still going on. I think whoever is really trying their heart out to get him thrown in jail, they should end up probably actually maybe not so much because. And I'm thinking of the person who prosecuted Aaron Swartz, who was a widely known American activist for the internet and co-founder of Demand Progress. And he was being arrested for violating terms of service, which why the heck that was ever a law or if it is still currently a law, why it is a law, I don't see why that should be there. I don't see why the law should be getting involved with any of these cases. It's the site's issue to deal with. Facebook has a rule against saying crap like that, so take it up with Facebook. Carter has parents. If anything, his parents should have just reamed, it, reamed him out for it. But next thing we all know, he gets a jail sentence instead. Mm -hmm. Which is really... That is just as far as anything needs to go. And to... And, and even this one guy in the comment section, he stated his discontentness his um his displeasure with the fact that taxpayers money are going would be going towards having him in jail so
So you're going to pay for someone to be in jail who didn't even do a serious crime. Yeah. And in the first place, regardless of the first bid, LOL, JK, unless they were blind and didn't see that part, that should be what tells you, oh, he did not actually mean this as much as they think he did. And my mother has suggested that when it comes to stuff like this, because on 9-11, school shootings, etc., that it puts people in fear. Honestly, I beg to call that fear bullcrap. Other than if they just didn't read the whole thing, then in any case they're wasting their time being fearful, as really any sort of fear can be just a waste of time, but in any case, ready for the next one? Yep. Alright, so this next one is Yogg's Cast declining to comment to PC Gamer about the $150,000 it received from, the, from their Yogg Ventures Kickstarter funds. So, their Kickstarter had raised over, it raised 500,000, no, 567,665 dollars, which is more than double its original goal, which was 250,000, and they took 150,000 out of that. And so, the, the Kickstarter didn't fail, however, what happened, I believe, was, I think it was a designer or artist, or something or other, quit the development or something. I, I, I forget which exactly it was, and... I don't really want to take the time right now to figure that part out, but what what do you think of this? Well, I've been a uh, supporter of Kickstarter campaigns before, Radiate Technology Shirts. The other one would be the Torch Paddle, and then I think the third one is uh, Madness uh, Interactive. I don't know if you've seen that on Newgrounds, but I'm pretty sure everybody has. Anyway, um... Yogscast, I have seen some of their videos, mostly Minecraft, but I haven't actually been uh, looking at this topic about Yog Ventures Kickstarter. It's such a shame f for this to fall apart after raising more than twice its goal. And when the and according to the article, it says that Wintercool missed multiple milestones and continued to come up short of the quality expectations, and that led to the refuse to advertise pre-orders. So, I guess, there, like like in any case, some of the things can go wrong. Like kicks, Kickstarter, it's not like Indiegogo where you donate the money and then if it's successful, if it's not successful, you don't get it back. But it's, I guess it's just disappointing. It's maybe it's all a misunderstanding about how business goes, because I don't know how much of the stuff I know. All that I know is I know Minecraft. I know I've seen their videos, but I haven't been paying attention to this uh, kind of situation. But I really, I really, really hope that they get this game out despite all of the uh, monetary obligations and confusion that have been happening uh, for this Kickstarter. And what I'm seeing here is developer Chris Vale admitted that inexperience led to mismanagement, citing a double face palm worthy incident in which an artist walked away with 35,000 lump sum payment of two weeks of work because his contract did not specify the conditions of his obligation but said that when Brindley 
found out about it, he lost faith right away in his ability to run the company from a business standpoint and basically required that all the rest of the Kickstarter, Kickstarter money that hadn't been spent be transferred to them right away. Yeah, I guess it gets us the whole contract issue and the fact that an artist walked away with $35,000 because of something that wasn't in the contract ended up losing faith right away. I, I don't know. I guess you pretty much know more about this than I do because, God dang, this article is so long right now. And the point is, I like Minecraft. I like Yogg's Cast. I want Yogg's Ventures to be successful, and I want them to be to be able to sell well to the community. So their loyal fans, especially, can just go with them over the years. But it's just it's just a shame that it couldn't work out like that people thought it would. Yeah, the out of. All these Kickstarter failures and possibly even scams, although I don't believe there have actually been any scams on Kickstarter. I was very surprised to see about uh, the failure of this one, which it turns out to actually be a bit old, but what ha what's happened now is they've promised all their backers free copies of another, I think, already developed game that they've um, ha shaked hands with another company on giving free copies of this other game to Kickstarter backers and Personally, I'm quite thankful I never funded it. I support the Yogg's cast. Yogg's cast Lewis and Simon are very humorous men. My favorites being the Dead Workers Party. <laughs> and... But... Just using that money towards something else after what you've promised to your fans seems like just not not really a jerk move or maybe it is but I I just don't consider it right it's almost like the oculus rift deal in which they got bought out by Facebook I hate that that had to happen I hate to think that all these people who supported their Kickstarter, the ones that got the Oculus Rift even out there, even in the development as far as it got, that all of a sudden now Facebook's giving them two billion for it, which is more than double what the Kickstarter even made. I. I feel like I almost got to side with the fans on this, as well as with Oculus, which I... Was that was that your Skype? That, no, that was mine. Silly Skype. But... I, I just... Don't like to see that all these fans won't get to play the game that was promised to them if they could help the Yogg Ventures team Winter Cool Games make the game which would be with Lewis and Simon in the game but it's a disappointment but I'm not sure if you'll know much about this one hopefully you do Phil Fish so, last year, there was, there were, Phil Fish did, I guess, maybe plan on Fez 2, until, and Fez, the first Fez game, 
had terrific success. And from what I've heard and read, it's a terrific game. But when it came to Marcus Spear from game trailers making his remarks about the game and then on Phil Fish, there's this whole Twitter battle between them two and it all ends in Phil Fish canceling Fest 2 and what's gone on now is when someone asks and I guess there's been a lot of people asking about Fest 2. He says, seriously, shut the f up about Fest 2. Never going to happen. You don't deserve it. And this other guy, I guess, countered that statement. And Phil Fest replies, it's en entitled gamer much. And... I kind of relate this in a way to Day One Gary's Incident, which Day One Gary's Incident, awful game from what I've seen, but awful PR. But when it comes to Phil Fish and Fez, brilliant game, but Phil Fish, he's just been so arrogant. And for some reason, when he gets this negative criticism on his game, he will lash out and basically give a big F you. Even to his, and to his own fans, or at least that claim to be his fans, he will cuss them out. But what, what do you think of this? And feel free that when I'm done talking to just jump in. Yeah. Alright, so... Um... I, ha I haven't actually played the first Fez yet, but I did see footage of the game, and it looked really, really amazing with its 3D environments, and the fact that you can switch the two-dimensional like screen of yours to another side, which is kind of cool. I did hear about this last year, and... He made a Twitter account, and then, you know, he was arrogant last year, and then he deleted it, and now he started another Twitter, and he's basically just making more backlash to, to consumers. So here's my goal if I want to make a game. So first, you've got to start off with all the necessities. You've got to start with the graphics, the story, improve the gameplay, the coding, etc., and then once you get the product out, you got to find a way to advertise it. So once you advertise the game and it gets greenlit, if, well, it might, I don't know, you then start receiving feedback from players who think that the game, you know, this could be improved, why don't you try this? And I guess you just have to have a team, like a nice, worthy team who is willing to listen to consumers to seeing how, how bad this is. I think... Here's my point is is that you should accept constructive criticism from from people who are willing to talk with you and discuss the things that you could improve. But if this guy can't handle this positive feedback, then he's probably not going to get that far. I mean, he didn't obviously do it last year, and doing this just hurts his credibility even more. And there's a video that Alpha Omega Sin actually posted regarding this incident. I know he swears like a sailor, and I still watched it. But other than that, he does make a good point. Just, just don't be a jerk to your fan base who liked the first game, and don't insult the people who are actually willing to ask if there's another one coming out. And... Nobody knows the frustration he's going through unless they met him personally, know his personal life, etc. A.K.A. It's the whole uh, To Kill a Mockingbird saying, you don't know somebody unless you're walking in their shoes. But the backlash and saying, shut the F up about Fez 2, gamers don't deserve it, that's not going to actually make things better. It's only going to make things worse. And that's only going to make more people keep on coming back at you. It's 
It's like dealing with a bully. Yeah. If you're going to or on YouTube or just Cyberbully. anywhere. If you're gonna p people on YouTube will tell someone else to just do something disgusting like kill themselves or just any other insult that could run through one's mind. And it's not gonna help this situation. People will take that and they're going to attempt to seem tougher and they're gonna F you back. That is just the way the world works, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But even then, to say gamers don't deserve the game, we maybe don't deserve the game, but why, why why is it such a problem if they're like if they're going to seem rude about it I can see that not so much of the still telling them to shut the F up about it but replying in a professional way which is really like you said his credibility or his professionalism he is failing at big time. I once had an incident over a game that is currently on hiatus called Aftermath in which I was getting a lot of comments or at least a few saying that the game turned out to be a virus or something according to their antiviruses and I basically made a reply comment claiming they must be trolls or something because I assure you there's nothing wrong with my game and that was something I did wrong although also part of that anger was because of the fact that at the time my mother had put a password on my computer and so I'd have to ask her every time to put it in for me and I didn't feel like asking her to put it in and finally that all and finally I was able to put the password in because she gave me it and I got the antiviruses nothing wrong with it at all and I replied it's more than likely just a false positive and I apologize for how j just my way of going about things. It was not correct of me, and even now, it wasn't correct. If people are. And, and even within my own religious beliefs, if someone's going to shoot you down, what you do to them is you build them back up because of course there is a thing that they're probably broken down themselves by shooting you down but it shows them that they're being a jerk to you but you're not going to take it like they're going to expect you to it's gonna it could blow their minds yeah Originally, they're thinking, I'm going to crap on this person, and then they're not going to be happy about it, and their day's going to be ruined. Dude, you're an idiot, and next thing you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but good wishes to you, sir. And then they're thinking, why are you saying that to me? I think someone needs to work on his PR a little. As much as he really doesn't seem to want to and has proved it over and over on Twitter and, and even he made a comment to Notch about I, I think it was something to do with Notch deciding that he's over the whole Oculus Facebook acquisition and Phil Fish had made some comment to Notch and Notch got him back basically that he's I, I think basically it was calling him a ne'er-do-well or something like that 
but yeah. So, shall we get uh, on to whatever this next one is? Yeah, let's go. All right. So, this next one is the one about the movie, which I'm afraid to say. But what's going on here is Chloe Grace Moretz, who's well-known for playing Hit Girl in kick arse she's also <laughs> <laughs> she's also well known for she's also played Carrie in the yes. latest Carrie which my mother didn't really like her because she thought she was too darn cute well she, she said um, she's an angry angry gerbil I'm thinking chipmunk, but that's not the right term for it either. Then again, I liked the remake very well anyway, but... Okay. Anyway, so the case here is she has decided to quit kick Arse for kick Arse 3 as Hit Girl. Her reasons being, and this... And on Digital Spy, it seems to be the only site, and I apologize for not quoting the destinations from these other articles, like I probably should be doing, but they're in the show notes, so I'll consider myself safe there. But one of the complaints she brought up is the sexuali sexualization, and quote, Whenever there's a female superhero, it's always a more sexual plotline rather than seeing an actual character on screen. I don't think that's cool. I think it's rather sad. And goes on to say that basically she'd like to see a non-sexualized Wonder Woman. As she hears there is a new one coming up, which I think is actually just a Justice League movie. And, but then, the other reason she comes up with, which I, of course, very well disagree with because I myself am an advocate of piracy, she goes on to say that it, that Hit Girl was a very good character, I don't think there will be any more movies. You make these movies for fanboys, which isn't, which I guess turns out to not be the greatest thing to say. Calling people fanboys over who they make the movies for. But nowadays, everyone seems to pirate them rather than watch them in the movie theater. And on that mm. subject, she says, if you want to watch. If you want more than one movie, everyone has to go and see movies at the cinema. It's all about the numbers in the theater. Hmm. And actually, before that, she also stated that the second movie was one of the number one pirated movies of the year, but it doesn't help us because we need box office figures and you're breathing in the mic a lot. Okay. <laughs> we we need to prove to the distributors that we can make money from a third and a fourth movie, but because it didn't do so well, we can't make another one. You go ahead, thing. All right. All right. Well, I got a couple of things to say. One, I'm a huge movie fanatic. I buy Netflix. I have a subscription, and I watch movies um, mostly every weekend because um, I like to watch mostly horror movies. I watched a foreign film recently called Rubber. It's not a it's not a porno. It's um it's a foreign <laughs> movie about a killer tire with psychokinetic powers and I recommend you watch it. Um I've seen ABCs of Death, which is not for the faint of heart. But here's the situation. I like her as an actor. I think as an actress. Sorry, I missed the gender. <laughs> I think I think she's I think she's a great actress, and I still should 
continue to see her in more films after I've seen her in Carrie. But the fact that she is quitting after Kick-Ass 2 because it was the the most pirated movie you swore. like last year. <laughs> what? You swore. What did I say? No, go on. <laughs> you said the movie name was just a bad word in it. Oh, come on. I quoted it. <laughs> All right, oh. anyway. Because I think I think the reason why she is quitting is because it's not because of the sexualization of women in movies and TV. It, it's going to happen everywhere. It's 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 the real world. Second, when she says that it's all about the numbers, I really think that she's too focused on the salary she's getting from movies that she's in. Because if you think about it, piracy is always going to exist everywhere in the digital world. Because we are basically in a world where we li- in a world where we live with technology as our most prized invention in the entire world. So, I don't think that she is quitting because of piracy or the fact that they show women in most movies as objects of desire. I think it's when she when she says it's about the numbers, I think she's mostly talking about her salary because obviously they have to pay Everybody who's involved with the movie, the directors, the writers, the producers, the camera work, everything. And the fact that a movie doesn't do well in the box office because it was mostly pirated on on like PC television, you know, uTorrent and such like that. That's just real life. There's nothing you can do. And I can't believe she quit because I haven't seen any of – I haven't seen Kick Arse – one or two, but I do think she's a great actress, and who knows? I might go see the new movie if I stay, because it's based on the novel, and I've already seen one movie based on a novel uh, by by uh, John Green. Oh. I think that's his name. Uh, the Fault in Our Stars. Oh, so that's that. That's I, I all. I heard I'm the saying. movie has gotten good reviews. But in terms of Kick Arse 2 and my brother who's at college now, what he suggested in terms of the theater stuff is actually the money from the movies that you go to see in theaters, that all goes back to the uh, movie makers. As with all the food and snacks he can get in the theaters, he says the reason why theaters make the food and all so much money is because that's the only way they can make their money back. Because all the money that goes into the movies goes back to the makers. But, in, in any case, for one, if, in, in terms of piracy, if anything's, like, like you see all these game makers and all that, and all these other studios and everything, and they're still running, and, or, or Blizzard. StarCraft II Wings of Liberty ended up being one of, I think it was actually the most illegally downloaded in one of the Guinness World Records books. And yet, Blizzard's still going. I don't see how they're losing any money. And not to mention that money isn't even there. The money can only be there if purchases are made. If there is piracy going on, you're not losing any money in that. And I think what should be more focused on 
is that the movie be seen. Then again, of course it is mainstream, but, and then, aside from the piracy stuff, when you look at the ratings, because I was thinking, I wonder what the ratings are of the kick Arse movies, and the first one, it did pretty well for critic ratings, but the second one was much lower. And I think that's at least got to be one of the, if not the reason why, because no one wants to see a crappy movie. And I've, it may be in the comments if this site does have comments, but somewhere someone mentioned, oh, maybe it was in the comments here. No, okay, maybe it wasn't in the comments, but basically commenting that Kickars 2 had poor writing and other stuff. I, I forget what the other stuff was, but there's more to why a movie isn't going to do well. And The Last Airbender, it made a lot of money, but the movie absolutely sucked. Yep. And it's being indicted into the list of worst films of all time. That's still an award, though. I shouldn't get anything. Just saying. <laughs> well, it, it, it's a D award. Or anti-award. That's what I can say. It's, really. it's still an award. People are still going to remember how bad it was. I remember how bad it was. I wasn't sure how to call the acting until I remembered back to this review I saw of it on Reviews on the Run, in which Victor Lucas and Scott Jones, well, one of them came up with that the acting was wooden. I could not come up with any better way to put it than it was wooden acting. Hmm. One one of the scenes that I remember is um, when Ang or Ong says, um, "Ang, go with the TV series. <laughs> Movie's bad." <laughs> <laughs> but Terrible. he says in just the weirdest enthusiastic way, um. I, I want to show you the air temple or something like that. And I know I'm not putting it in the right tone. Maybe. I, I want to show you the air temple. Oh, yeah, I. Or want to see the air temple? So I, I can't get the right tone, but something about that tone just. It was far off from what would really ever sound like at, at least the 12 years old age but anyway I, I think that should cover that watch the TV series yeah seriously just if, if you have Netflix or whatever source you use just watch that series it's great it's I, I wish some of those characters were actually real, like they existed, because there's so much personality that's put into it. And I think it's nearly impossible to fit a two-hour movie out of all those series on television. It's just impossible. That's why it didn't work. Well, they didn't take it out of all three seasons. They took, and Knight took the whole of the first season and put it into that movie. Yeah, you can't. We don't see Jet. Uh, I was, well, Jet and the Freedom Fighters. I was thinking, what about Toph? But no, she doesn't come in until season two. But just so, so much wasn't in there. And I think you'd see Azula more. I think she only gets, at the most, one scene in that movie. 
And then the fact that um, Sokka, he is not ever sarcastic, full on, um, I suppose as it's deemed to be emotionless seriousness. And then Aang just wooden. The, the, the only good actor that I could give any props to at all in The Last Airbender are Dev Patel. Dev yeah. Patel's role was the only thing I could enjoy. Other than the special effects, but even those lacked some. Yeah, those did. <laughs> and oh. The animated show, they show so much stuff that what the Benders can do. You know, they they show like there's so much action happening in the cartoon, but when you watch the movie, it's like, okay, when are they gonna start using their their powers? And it's like, oh, they, I guess they didn't have the, and and, and think about it, the the budget for this movie was like what? I have to look it up because I have no they, idea. They, they, what, the was budget, it eighty million dollars, something or other, but. And 150 next, million dollars. That's how much they put into this movie, and I can't believe the special effects were really bad. The trailer looked awesome. Do you remember oh seeing the trailer? Oh my gosh, the the trailer, the trailer was it was it was excellent. And I watched Angry Joe Show review it, and oh yeah, even I could not agree with him more. The scenes that you see in that trailer, they are not in the final movie. Nope. And That's like Paranormal Activity. In one of the trailers to the last, to um, Harry Potter Part 7, Part 2, do no, no, Harry Potter 7, Part 2, no worries, there are no spoilers, but a scene in that trailer does not appear in the final movie. And in the DVD copy I have of it, it's not in the special features either. But at least the rest of the movie is excellent. But anyway, before we get any more off topic, let's get to these last ones, which you'll know yeah. about. Yep. Alright, so the next one is about the standalone Kinect for the Xbox One. There's a release date and a price. So, for those of you who saw the E3 footage last year in June, you realize that the Xbox One was coming out for $500 with the Kinect included. Now, I think before this, the Xbox 360 just came out at first, and then they added the Kinect. I'm not sure. I'm just speaking from yeah, experience. Yeah, the Kinect came later. They decided to sell the Kinect with it but this only was official for a temper for a period of time so a lot of people were furious because they had to buy a connect with the xbox one so now it has been several months later and now they're selling it without the connect for the xbox one for four hundred dollars and now they're selling the standalone Connect for a hundred fifty dollars, and it's going to be released on October seventh of this year. My only question is, why are they selling it fifty dollars more than what you could get with the bundle? That's my question. I don't know. Do you know why they're doing it? Say that again. Well. Okay, let me get this straight. So, the Xbox One with the Kinect is $500. They're not selling it. If you were to take the Kinect away, it would be $400. They're selling the Kinect alone this October for $150. So, really, you're not... You're pretty much... I guess saving money if you decide to buy the Xbox One with the Kinect as opposed to just buying the Kinect separately. I just think it's really, really silly. 
But they're also including a downloadable title called Dance Central Spotlight. I'll, Go create. I'll be honest, from a business standpoint, and from seeing other ways of bundles being done, I'm sorry thing, but I'm not sure I really see anything too bad by it. Other than that, they're, I, I guess they're just really pushing to get the connect out there. Although there are a lot of people who don't want it, and there are still games that use it while require it, like the Connect Sports Resort or whatever the new game was, and its controls didn't, did not work so well. Yeah. I mostly use my Xbox One and my Connect for my media center, so it's basically my cable along with everything else. And then I have my PS3 like on another side of the room that I play in a different format. It says on the article, fans believe that Microsoft was beginning to distance itself from the unit, but, my, but Microsoft has said they are still committed to making titles based around the Connect. When the Kinect came out, it was a pretty interesting thing, being able to move around and exercise and do all this sorts of stuff. is really cool, but I guess it never really caught on because they haven't been making so many games. I mean, if you were to compare uh, E3 2012 and compare it to E3 2013, they focused more on games as opposed to just, you know, television and... Uh, there's still the connect is kind of slow it's it's like the ps4 it doesn't have a lot of titles for it but eventually i guess as time goes on it might have more i just think that it's kind of silly that they're they're selling a standalone connect because that's basic to me that's kind of a disappointment to those who wanted to buy it without the connect and then they have to pay 150 dollars extra for it but they i guess it comes with a game so i guess I guess they're kind of safe there. Yeah. I I use it I use it with Skype. It works really well with Skype, and it also recognizes me when I walk in front of the camera. So, I think the Connect is cool because it's the first time I ever bought one. I didn't buy the Connect for the Xbox 360 because I just didn't have enough room. But now that my Xbox One is downstairs in my family room with a large television, it works just fine. But hmm. standalone connects. I mean, I guess it's okay. It's just, it's just something I don't agree with. Ah. And something he, you know more about than I do. Yeah. But, like I say, from a business standpoint, it, it seems like a good marketing strategy to get it out there. Even though, even myself, I'm not sure I'd really go for it. But being as technology savvy as I am, though, one could beg to differ. <laughs> but let, let's see this last topic of yours. Yep. So these topics were kind of thought up on the fly. So according to the first one, for those of you who don't know who Anita Sarkeesian is, she is the founder of something called Feminist Frequency, which she talks about these uh, a t series called Tropes vs. Women in Games. And... Basically, people have been hating her from the very get-go of how women are portrayed in video games. And let's be honest, when I want to play games, I just want to enjoy all of the hard work that the developers, the publishers, the artists, the coders, etc. making this game making those games. But the truth is is that not all men and women are created equal in the world itself, as we know, especially when it comes to games. So this isn't something that I really, really like to focus on, but this article brought to, brought to attention really has me concerned because according to this article, she was actually driven out of her home by online abuse and death threats. And this is something that I have, I'm kind of not surprised about, but I'm very concerned about because... Um, a lot of, a lot of, you know, women out there are getting beaten, raped, assaulted by 
by men and sometimes women too. But I really think that the people who are sending these death threats saying, you know, like trigger warning, I'm going to kill you and such as, I think those people who are the internet trolls, and I put that in quotes because I said so, they're just not they're horrible. They're horrible, mis mis misogynistic, I think that's a word, people. Yeah, misogynistic is a word. Because when, when, I see, when I saw her videos at first, I understood the thing that she was trying to convey, is that we need to be more aware of the situation that's out in the world. But people just view her as an annoying, uh, just annoying person who wants attention, who only speaks one-sided, who is only opinion based and ignores everybody else's opinions. For God's sakes, guys, she was on TED Talks talking about this stuff. So I think I think whatever she's doing, that's fine with her. If she wants to go the way that she's going, that's fine. But I think the people who are sending her death threats are the misogynistic people that are in the world today. These aren't just trolls. These are people who are trying to actually attack her on a personal matter as opposed to just leaving a comment on a page like like saying bull crap that nobody will ever understand and it's it's kind of terrifying if you think about it so i hope she's safe and i hope people understand the message that she is trying to convey to a general audience and to those who send her death threats you need to just get off the internet, stop sending these hurtful comments that caused her to drive, to make her drive out of her home because she was threatened. Just stop it. Just don't do that. The, and what, I've, what I'm beginning to find about these people who will say such things, these people must just be lonely. And in such, they're going to go out of their way to take it out on people and for some reason in the gaming community community there's just so much going on whether it's j just any sort of hate whether it's against women whether it's against the LGBTs any of them or, or even other um, races or cultures it's crazy. People yeah. are going... People will say... For some reason, a lot of... There's... For those who have seen The Online Gamer, which is about a guy whose girlfriend gets him an Xbox before... as a present before she leaves for a few weeks for work and he he's not he's originally not a big Xbox player well he he doesn't play video games at all and the game she gave him with it is Modern Warfare 2 and after a few weeks next thing she gets to find out after many missed messages to his phone He's totally addicted, and he's turned into a uh, homophobic, misogynistic, um, anti-disabled people's person. A ve basically, a very lonely outcast because of his video games addiction. Of which way the series has ended previously, but I'm not going to give out any spoilers. I highly recommend it. It's not for those who are easily offended. I will give that out. But... It's... Definitely something to look at. Because yeah. what goes on with Aaron, who is the main character, that's what goes on a lot in video games. And how he interacts with others... Whether it's um, telling people to, to do something sexual, like the whole suck my wado sort of thing. Yeah. 
or um, re really any of that, or calling people um, FAG noobs or stuff like that. It is a prime example of what goes on in the gaming community, and even relating back to the Justin Carter topic, there are douchebags all over the place in video games. There is unfortunately no way away from it other than just to ignore it, but the fact that it's driven this lady, Anita Sarkeesian, out of her home I, I'm not sure what kind of threats she's gotten, but if the stuff's getting that personal, I can't help but agree that that is scary, and even now finally being put through that kind of worry of, or even just paranoia whether it's irrational or not. It is a right. scary feeling that yes, some of these yeah, people is. are going to get so deep into abusing people. In fact, that's the best yeah. way to put it. It's abusing people. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it just because of something you can't control. And... Mm -hmm. What whatever she's going through, and whatever she's had to put up with, I sympathize with her. That's I good. most certainly haven't gotten the kind of crap she has, but and her being a woman and putting up with all the misogynism, which is huge in the online gaming community, unfortunately, as well as the other sorts of hate mm -hmm. speech and all that in games. Yeah, it's just, it's frightening, and I, I don't want this to happen to anybody else, because it's like, somebody try, people just try to spread some awareness of of things to talk about and then there are these people they don't take the time to actually think okay what is the message that she is trying to convey but instead they just go to their keyboards and they start typing out these really really hurtful things and and threats toward this one person because they believe that the per because they they believe that Anita is doing something that those guys just think it's it's stupid and retarded so that so they end up just saying you know you're you're annoying get off this earth you don't deserve to live there's so many scary things that people say now it's not just internet trolling it's 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 pretty much cyber bullying and threatening even maybe terrorism we don't know <laughs> we don't know yeah and... all right shall we move on or do you have something else to say i did for a moment but then I kind of lost. Oh yeah, that's what it is. That's what I was going to come up with. Is that I, I was thinking people just don't want to move on from their traditional views. Which I guess for some people it could be traditional. But stereotypical more so. That yeah. it's only male persons playing video games. It is not just male persons. It's that. I know you personally don't want that to be the thing forever and I don't want it to be like that forever it I know females who play video games and they are awesome people I know people of other sorts that play video games there's nothing wrong with them I don't know why there's gotta be something some hoo-ha made over that oh they're playing games they're trying to change something about the games and if it's just in, even in her YouTube videos for one who said you had to watch it 
but maybe whether it's their obligation with that she's trying to bring something that they think shouldn't be in video games which is basically more acceptance of other people and what they believe or who they are and it's just it's beyond ridiculous it's despicable but yeah. I think before we run too much for time we do have wanna sing it with me all right, before I say that, I just want to mention this quick update. So I posted a fishing video of Steam on the 25th of August, and it was a new, uh, like, fishing attempt that was made by scammers. So what you do is someone would send you a firm request. You would accept it. They would send you two links that look like image files, but they're actually hidden URLs of Google document folders. So if you were to click it, it would download a screensaver file or script file to your computer. And you're su technically you're supposed to open it. It's like, oh, look. But no, if you double click on it, it ends up installing it. And what I think happens is it steals the SSFN file, uploads it to their side, and then is able to bypass and steal your account. I uploaded a video showing this, and there is a Valve uh, Steam support representative known as Derek G. And he actually used my video as a reference for the new uh, phishing thing that happened. So that was amazing. So within a couple of days, I got my views up to a thousand. I said, thanks, you know, spread the video around. And so people did. And I'm glad that somebody who is a Steam support representative using my video as an example to warn others to be aware of a new phishing attempt that has been going around uh, for the past for the past couple to few weeks and I thought it was cool ah. all right well congratulations on that <laughs> I mean it Thanks. fully okay all right so let's say it together say what sorry remind listener me listener contributions listener contributions but in an enthusiastic way. All right. Three, two, one. Listener, Listener contributions. contributions. God, that's so hard to do because there's voice lag. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Okay. And anyway, we tried. So I am going to take two and you can take the other two. So. All right. My friend Super Mastodon says, Greetings, JBJ. Super Mastodon here. So recently, Phil Fish has been a jerk again to his fans via Twitter. After all the support and money given to him, this is what he pays back to see for yourself. And so he links us to his article, which is in the show notes, and Omega Sin's video on YouTube which we'll actually just link their submissions in the show notes so you can see it yeah. for yourself and then this next one is from Uncle Maurice whether he's an actual uncle or not or whatever but anyway <laughs> hey there JBJ Blaze and thing I'm just <laughs> going to say that I like listening to your shows especially Blaze on Nation podcast, believe it or not. It's not a waste of time, to be honest, since a lot of your topics are actually real good. I think more people should actually listen to the shows you make. Peace. That's a very good idea. They should <laughs> listen. I I'd love to agree, but I humble myself too much. Alright, and this next one comes from a name of Mama Titang. That's pretty that's pretty cool. He says, What's up? He says, Quick question. Does Facebook actually spy on you? If it does, then that would be really creepy and I would be forced to delete my account. 
thank Cha in advance. And I know I didn't quote everything he said because I'm a grammar Nazi. But, um, yeah, let's answer your question. Does Facebook really spy on us? Well, it depends because I think you're I signing an agreement to the things that Facebook is going to be able to see and control and such as. But it also depends on how much you share on your Facebook profile, whether it be information, photos, videos, friends, and so forth. I would stick to friends. I do think they actually spy on you, but not the NSA kind of spying. I, I think Facebook, and there's actually been some contra controversy over this, which I guess Facebook's been apologizing a lot to users for um, using their personal for information for stuff like advertisements and all that stuff. Yeah. And personally, I don't really pay much attention to it. I use Facebook to keep in contact with all my friends who probably don't use any other sort of social networking service. I don't really play the Facebook games too, too much. If anything, Pawn Stars is my pick. Yeah, but... I'm not a fan of Facebook games either. And then again, I couldn't say they're not video games, but they're definitely not. Uh, they're not the quality that you can get on other platforms other than Facebook. Yeah. All right, and then the last one is greetings, Blaze. Sorry, what? You gotta say his name. Oh, all right, and the next one is by Moises the Monk, and he says, Greetings, Blazed on Nation crew. Moises here. If you could go back in time and talk to someone, like Hitler, Einstein, etc., who would you choose? And he says, I personally want to talk to Hitler by going in a time portal, punch his face, and pinch his mustache, then quickly go back to the present time <laughs> Open up his Wikipedia page and see my name in history, quote, a man punched and pinched Hitler. Wouldn't that be awesome as hell? I know, it's, I'm just <laughs> quoting that. And P.S., pardon my silliness, but that's just really me. Well, okay, Mo Moises the Monk. Um, if you're really a monk. Um... He's definitely a savage <laughs> monk. Yeah. Uh, uh, unless, um, may maybe he's a Jewish monk. I don't know. It's probably just an alias. All right, I'm going to go first. If I could go back in time, who would I choose? Well, you know, that's kind of a very hard question for me because I would like to go back in time and talk to a lot of people. But I think one of the people that I would like to go back in time and talk to is... I don't even know. This is such a tough question. <laughs> uh, I, go back. Uh, you go I'd first. I'd be thinking m maybe there's Einstein to find out whether he it, he was really smart or whether he just took credit for it from his wife because, of course, at the time, women didn't have all the rights that they have now, including the fact that they get to... Ha they get to take credit for something. There's Robert Wadlow, mostly because I'm growing taller than a lot of people. There's, um, there's Sir John A. MacDonald, who, uh, who apparently, on his way from leaving the Liberal Party, was standing drunk in some crap, some box of feces or something, and Chris. said, but basically said that this is what the liberal platform is. <laughs> <laughs> and just maybe to do the same thing as he did without being drunk. All right. Said, um, I agree. I... <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go back in time and um, 
uh, meet Benjamin Franklin the day where he is doing his experiment with a kite during a thunderstorm. So I could see his because he's the one who in, invented um, electricity and daylight savings time. Ah. Edison invented the light bulb. Pretty oh, sure yeah. that was him. I would like to meet him too. Yeah, I I'd, I'd also like to meet him. There's there's um John F Kennedy that way and trigger trigger warning but that if that using my knowledge about what happened to him at the time now just when yeah. possible shove him over yeah, it's like, it's like, duck, run! There's a magic bullet. It's coming for you. Just joking, joking. And yeah, it's really sad that he was assassinated. That kind of wasn't fair because mm. he had a he had a nice, um, really great going personality, and, and he was a from, good man. From what and I've, it was a shame that he had to get assassinated. From what I've read, he was a very good president, and I guess a funny thing is. Is even with some of these very good presidents, they're good presidents, but not very good husbands. As they let their thing go dancing around with other women, but oh, yeah. in any case, with the fact that he was a Catholic president, and I guess there were quite a few people, and most likely, especially the KKK. That didn't appreciate that with having a president who had such religious views. But my, my apologies if that got too deep, but it would be cool to see what yeah. what what it would change, especially considering the current US president, who seems to be a very good family man, but a terrible president. Which is funny, because it almost makes me wonder if that's how it works. Is yeah, it, his job is not easy. Is It's, it's not a, easy. Yeah. Is it either a president has a very good politics, or they are a very good family man? And the other they have to suck big at. Yeah. But... I think that pretty much wraps up everything. Don't want to go too, too late. And actually, we might even be good on time anyway, because I think we started at, uh, at about 9.50 or so. But, yeah. before we do go, there are all the referral links that will be in the show notes, as well as ffsplit.com, which I did try for my listening party for Lincoln Park's The Hunting Party, which I highly recommend. Total headbanger. But for some reason, I just couldn't get FF Split to work. Probably will work on it soon, though. And please do leave us reviews and ratings on Stitcher, which you'll hear the link to that in the outro bumper that'll really help us out and get more out there and for those who think it's just me running the show it is now officially including thing so if you want to say something maybe regard it to jbj blaze and thing or blaze on blaze on nation crew that way we don't leave thing out because that's just kind of mean <laughs> and to those who are going back to school, have a f safe ride there. Be careful, stay safe, don't get into the drugs. Don't try getting anyone pregnant. Safety as, first. Yes, exactly. And if the police think something's wrong, let them reason with you. Not in all cases will they be correct. But especially in the cases of college antics or university antics, they are likely correct. 
and it will save your freaking life. Obey the law. That's all I gotta say. Exactly. Obe obey the law, comply, don't do anything stupid. And also, I never shouted out to anyone in the chat tonight because no one came to the stream, but if you do want to be shouted out, twitch.tv slash jbjblaze, and I'm going to leave the Patreon link alone because I haven't done anything with that. And I've also gotten in a new article with Indie Gamers, which you can check them out at indiegamers.co.uk. What can everyone follow you at, Thang? On Twitter? Yep, you can follow me at at the thing 2010. So T H E T H I N G 2010. And your YouTube? Uh, Splinter Saw God, S C God, S C G O D. And if you want to check out another channel, I make YouTube videos with my brother, which is called. Palka Brothers, so P-A-L-K-A -A and then Brothers, because we're brothers. <laughs> yep, and you can follow me at JBJ Blaze, and just in case it's not in the, it's not actually in the outro, at Blaze on Nation. But thank all who've tuned in, like I said, including this part. There will be a lot of editing involved, especially if we've gotten audio glitches. But thank you all, and let's get back to school, shall we? Well, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, we, we apologize if we have any stuttering issues with the whole uh, Skype thing, because, well, obviously it's, it's Skype and nothing's perfect, right? Yes. Anyway, good night. Have a good night. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonnation.tk for more articles and show notes, to flippinawesome.engine.com slash bnp for show notes, and check out the show on Stitcher at bit.ly slash bnpstitcher. Have a good night, everybody.